Hello everyone, so I am back today to talk about another Shudder film that I watched recently. Not a Shudder exclusive. Shudder is constantly updating their films, putting new content on. And a few weeks ago they uploaded a whole bunch of, I believe they called them French extreme horror films. And there's a lot of them on the list that I've, I've been wanting to watch for quite some time. And several of them I'd never heard of. And this was one I'd never heard of before and I decided to just jump into it and watch it. And this movie is called Livid. Livid is directed by Alexandra Bustillo and Julian Maury. Young Lucy's first day as a trainee in-house caregiver. She visits Miss Jessel, an old woman who lies in a cerebral coma by herself in her large desolate house. Learning by accident that Mrs. Jessel, a former dance teacher of repute, supposedly possesses a treasure somewhere in the house. Lucy and friends William and Ben decide to search the house in hope of finding it. At night, they get into the house, which reveals itself to be increasingly peculiar. Their hunt for Mrs. Jessel's treasure leads them into horrifying supernatural series of events that will change Lucy forever. Uh, I went into this movie knowing nothing about it, and then I went on to Letterboxd and looked up these directors. These directors have made movies that I have reviewed. The first being The Deep House, which was an underwater horror thing that I watched that I really enjoyed, and then they made the Leatherface prequel, which uh, I did not like at all, and I thought that it was not great. I did reviews for both of those films, and it was interesting to know that they made this. There's another one they have on Shudder that I'm going to watch called Inside that I've heard a lot of people really like. And this movie sort of falls in the middle of the road for me as far as their work. It has its moments. There's some really, truly horrific imagery in it. Uh, there's some moments I really liked. It turns into this more surreal kind of art house film, which I like those type of movies, but it's a little scatterbrained and all over the place. And the third act really feels rushed. This is like supernatural mixed with vampires, I guess, with like elements of the house. This person gets pulled through a mirror into some weird room at one point, And it's kind of just throwing all of these different elements that you've seen from other films into this movie. And that's what really didn't work for me about it. You have our lead character, Lucy, who uh, from early on, you can tell, is getting this job. She's trying to find her way in the world. They try to build up her backstory a little bit, but never enough to where you're really 100% connected with her character. In the first like 20 minutes of the film, it's just her going from place to place to learn this routine of how to take care of these elderly people. And the woman that she works with is showing her step by step. And then you're introduced to this big house that's really vacant and empty and creepy looking. The woman implies that, she, that the woman that they're taking care of has a bunch of money. And she's like, oh, we can come back and take the money from this lady because she's comatose and has like a breathing mask on and she can't move. And of course, you know, with it being a horror movie that something is going to happen. And then there's this whole buildup between her and her boyfriend and his friend of like, are they or are they not going to do it? And that takes up like the first almost half hour of the film. And it just feels like it's way too bloated. Uh, that's what disappointed me. Once you get into the house and the creepy stuff starts happening, it, it's really good and it's well filmed. There's some really good visual effects in this. There's this like creepy little girl ballerina that's dead that has like, it's like her eyes and her mouth look super weird. And it's, I liked all that stuff. It was really creepy. It, it made the atmosphere really interesting. But it's so scatterbrained in the way the information is introduced. There's like these flashback sequences to sort of give you an idea into who this woman is in the house. And you, you kind of build it up as a viewer and you can piece together what it is. But the third act and the ending of the film is just so bonkers that it's, it's like... They wanted to make something ridiculous and over the top in the ending, and it just didn't work for me. I, I was like, okay, I understand what you're going for. I get it. It felt kind of sloppy and lazy to me. It felt like they spent so much time on the buildup that the actual like payoff of the horror elements of the film just weren't worth it. And that's upsetting because I thought that the environments were really cool. The house is really dilapidated and kind of gross looking. Uh, it's also very expansive, which allows for the 
camera to really move around and uh, different settings throughout the house to work for these really horrific sequences that occur. And these directors are incredibly capable. Uh, the Leatherface film was shot really beautifully despite the fact that I didn't like it. I this The sepia tone got kind of annoying, but they're competent filmmakers. That Deep House was so interestingly shot and really well made, and I liked that movie a lot more than this film. Uh, and I know, like I said, that Inside movie, a lot of people talk about that as like their masterwork, which I'm really looking forward to watching since it's on Shudder. Uh, but yeah, this one, for the most part, I don't have a lot much else to say about it. It was disappointing. Uh, it's not horrible. If you're looking for something that's got some creepy visuals and you're willing to sit through like 35 minutes of nothing to finally get to some creepy imagery that really doesn't have that great of a payoff, then by all means, watch it. Uh, I think these directors are really capable people who I will watch their other work. Like I said, uh, they're... Right now, they're one for three for me. The Deep House was really great. Uh, that's streaming, I believe, on Hulu right now, and it's 100% worth your time. It's a fantastic film. Really well shot, really interesting, definitely creepy. Uh, the Leatherface prequel is not worth your time. I'll definitely look out to watch other stuff from these guys in the future. So have you seen Livid? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you thought. I thought this movie was mediocre and not that great which is disappointing because I thought it had a lot of potential. As always, if you like the video and subscribe to the channel, it helps me out a lot and lets me know the type of content you're looking for. I'm always putting out new videos and I look forward to hearing what you think of these movies. And as always, everybody, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.